Hi everyone, welcome to the October 2022 Energy Update. I'm Lee, I'm an intuitive. Every month I take the pulse on what might be showing up for us energetically, emotionally, psychologically as a collective. A few of the themes that I will be covering this month. The metamorphosis that we are all in and the sheets of emotion that are coming off us and falling off us as we go through it. The heart and throat energetic eruptions and expansions. October will be a big month for that. And lastly, believe the aligned truth of those whose heart energy you can feel. Heart energy is the barometer of the future. So stay tuned for the full update. Hi everyone, welcome to the update for October. I don't know about you, I can't believe how fast this time goes. And before we get started, I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you who have supported my new book and audible audio recording, Conversations with the Z's, which you can see right here. It's my guides in conversation with psychotherapist uh, Diana Edwards. So I'm channeling, she's asking me lots of questions. And those of you who are in my portal members community, you receive the audio from the books many, many months ahead. So thank you to my portal members for your support, but thank you to all of you who went out and got yourself a copy and have been sending us the loveliest messages. It means a lot. And book two will come out next May. So we have a lot to cover this month. First thing I'm just gonna ask you is how are you doing? I think that our world has been challenging and massive in so many ways for so many years. And even though there is a break point that it feels like we have moved into this year, certainly after 2020 and 2021, there has been a lighter, more expansive energy moving in. Certainly many of the challenges that we are seeing and experiencing that are rising to the surface can really rock you or knock you. So as you will have heard me say, if you've been with me for a while, self-care is not a luxury and figuring out how to balance ourselves and what it is that we uniquely need, because we're all different. We all need different modalities at different times and different people and different teachings and different environments. Figuring out what works for you is really important because you will know you're on track right now if you are able to feel present in your life, if you're able to feel grateful several moments a week or like you're able to be present with people that you love or work that you're doing, something that feels purposeful. If all of that seems very far away, this is the time to really immerse yourself in your own healing and your own understanding of what lights you up as a person. We haven't been given great training in that as a society. And yet we're coming into this era where more of those tools and also more of that need is emerging for us as a society. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the headlines that my guides disease have given me for this month to come October. Firstly, metamorphosis energy and sheets of emotion leaving you. So we are still in this global metamorphosis, both the way that we see our world and our society, but also personally. And many of you will relate to that. You might be really feeling like right now you're in this quite tense or emotional or difficult push-pull between where you've been and where you want to get to. Some of you may already feel that you've gone through that difficult passage and you're feeling more present as the new you. But sheets of emotion leaving us was a very strong emphasized message from my guides that you might just be experiencing enormous emotional waves that don't make a lot of sense or that you can't necessarily pin on anything going on in your life. You're just feeling very emotional and it can overtake you. Whenever these sheets of emotion move through you and they feel personal, it's not just you feeling empathy for other people or feeling heartbreak for other people. It's a very almost surreal experience of suddenly this flush moving through your body. You are releasing the past 
and sometimes it will be us releasing our own personal history, some of the trauma we've experienced, some of the things that we've gone through that have been difficult that we can now release. But equally, we're in a time where we as a collective are releasing a lot. So ancestral releases are also par for the course. And many people ask me what I mean when that term comes through me. It's twofold. It can literally be the ancestral history of your own family, your own direct line. So for example, if no one in your family had done the kind of work that you're now doing, you might feel a little out of your element at first, or like there's no blueprint for you energetically. And that can push you through some of your own limiting beliefs or ideas because no one has helped support you in that. But equally, just who we are as a collective right now, it's like a healing bonanza. When it, wherever you look, it's like explosions left, right, and center in all of our trauma areas. So it can create a real energetic field. And if you're an empath and you have definitely caught that you're, let's say, very much magnetized and buried in other people's emotions, this is going to be a great time for you to learn some empath skills and some empath tools. How to figure out how to not get lost in what's going on outside you and feeling overwhelmed by the world. Because then, when you start to be able to fortify more of a relationship with your own emotions, you will notice these sheets of emotion coming off you at the moment. So if you're going through that and it feels very strange to you or you're wondering, why am I so emotional? It's in the air and it's in the energy field. So many of us are harnessing that and having a very personal experience. Perhaps one day you're sitting in your car and all of a sudden you have this memory or no memory at all and it just moves out of you and you start to wonder what's going on with me. Try and remember if ever you're getting a little too concerned or obsessed with what's going on with you, a greater question to ask is what's going on with all of us because it's happening to all of us and it doesn't always look uh, as well held as it might for someone else. So it, for someone else, it might look like having a rage attack at somebody else because they're not yet emotionally aware. They're just not in that place. They're emotionally reactive. They're hostage to their emotions and their thoughts. They haven't yet developed that presence or that space that many of us have had to learn and go and study and go and seek to just be able to stand back and widen your energy field and your view of things a little bit. So metamorphosis energy is going to continue to be strong in October. And many of you in September and October will have been feeling these sheets of emotion coming off you. You're making way for the new. So the next theme is, are you allowing or resisting the wave of change? In recent months, I think it was last month's energy update, there was a very strong message about to transform or to rest. This transformation energy is fast and it's pushing many of us through stages and timelines of our life very quickly. There was a message about, are you in a transformation period or are you in a resting and integration period? Is it time for you to slow down, calm down, take your foot off the gas with all the stimuli around us and just have some quiet time for yourself for a few days as much as you can. I know that many of you will have dependence and responsibilities, but within that, you can't be held hostage to everyone else. Then you're not in your own center. Then you're everybody else's slave, energetically, emotionally, physically. It's vital that you can reclaim yourself in some way with some practices or with protecting 30 minutes a day that's just for you. However you need to figure that out or what you need to do, it's very important because the message about allowing or resisting the wave of change is a key one. We tend to get very panicky, obsessive in thought, a little uncomfortable when change is moving through us and we can resist it. We can literally dig in our heels and put our defenses up and start adding emotion and thought to everything we're going through. But when we release, ah, when we surrender, when we are in conditions and communities and relationships where our nervous system feels safe enough to be able to go, ah, then there is a huge shift. So are you allowing or resisting the wave of change? If you're resisting it, it might look like 
ideas that you have about things that are going wrong in your life right now that actually aren't necessarily going wrong. They're just stopping you carrying on the old patterns and asking you to walk into something new. And if you're allowing the wave of change, you're probably having a lot of joy, a lot of gratitude, and a lot of wow and wonder in a in a in amidst um, perhaps some, shall we say, disorienting moments. Because it's always disorienting when you change fast or when you grow fast. There can be moments where you're like, oh, hang on a second, where's the old me or where's the part of me that used to enjoy doing that activity? We have to let that go in order to let the new come in. And when we're going through waves of change, remember we don't tend to stick with our old patterns. You might not have wanted to watch television for three weeks and that's not normal for you, but don't panic about it. It might just be a period of time where you aren't watching your favorite shows or it might be your new normal and you're done with them. But it's often when we panic or try and control what's happening that we get in the way of the wave of change that wants to move through us. Waves of change, when they're moving through us in that way, they're like kundalini activations. It's our soul light and soul life and soul energy trying to re-embody itself within our body, our mind, our emotions. We were all conditioned, most of us, there's a few people who managed to escape it, but most of us were conditioned to disconnect from our soul selves and our sensory selves when we were young. We were put into our societal boxes and our societal ideas. And so the deprogramming of that does feel like a wave of change and a, and a shift of energy moving through your body. So if you're feeling surges of energy right now, you're in the wave of change. So ask yourself, am I allowing it or am I resisting it? And then choose which you would like to do. We often resist change when we think something's going wrong, but actually, usually it just means something's going different to either what we expected or what we're normal. So try and be kind to yourself and curious if you're finding yourself putting up your armor against things that are going on in your life. Ask yourself, if this was happening for me, not to me, how could I look at this differently? The third theme relates to the first two, basically higher consciousness pulses of energy are forcing out the old, the heavy, and the painful. And this is personal and it's global. I don't think any of us need to look too far to understand how that's showing up globally. You just have to pick your crisis area to look at, to focus on. Perhaps some of you are supporting in those areas. Perhaps some of you are working to bring change in those areas. But these higher consciousness pulses, they're forcing out the old, the heavy, and the painful. And in much the same way that people who perhaps have been in control of others don't tend to let go of that control gracefully. They tend to fight harder and rear their head more and become more vocal when they think they're losing their grip. The other thing to look at is how does that show up for us personally? And that links to what I was saying about allowing or resisting the wave of change. You know, are we fighting with the metamorphosis that we're going through or are we willing and able to remember that metamorphosis is life? For those of us who are lucky enough to live eight, nine decades, 10 decades even on this planet, we will constantly go through metamorphosis. But the way that consciousness is moving on the planet right now, we're going through a consciousness shift in human history that is unprecedented for all of us. My guides have said that even if you go back, you have to go back about 10,000 years to get the level of consciousness that is trying to break through right now, but it's having to work hard to do it. So many of us are having those experiences too. When it feels hard to shift or to see things differently, it's our programming meeting our soul energy. And the two are trying to have a new relationship. So um, heart and throat, energetic eruptions, and expansions is the next theme. So for me, whenever anything is to do with the throat, it's communication and the beauty of the connection between our heart and our throat. And also I'll throw in our third eye because when you're able to intuitively and 
speak in a heartfelt and an intuitive way. It's a very powerful combination that, again, many of us were not uh, trained into allowing. But the real theme at the moment is heart and throat. So your heart energy getting stronger. And again, there might be a lot of heart release. This relates back to those sheets of emotion that might be coming off you. Emotion that is going to, shall we say, stop your heart expanding and feeling more full, but coupled with the throat. So it was interesting, heart and throat energetic eruptions and expansions were the two words that were given to me. So you might find yourself you know, saying some things that you aren't used to saying in a way that you aren't used to saying them. And it's a bit unusual for you, but it's part of your mission right now. It's part of your journey. And who knows, maybe you're about to become a more outspoken person forever, or maybe you're just going through a phase where you're learning to be more outspoken so that you can silence yourself a bit less. But the two are connected. So if you're in the expansion phase, you might just feel like, oh great, my heart's expanding, my way of communicating is expanding, I'm having more powerful conversations with people I love, that's great. If you're in the eruption phase, it can feel uncomfortable, it can feel like you're not quite in control of what's going on in your heart and your throat, it hasn't yet settled in your body. Or equally, people around you are causing you to have big heart emotions or throat I'll say constrictions or challenges, you know, perhaps you're being forced into conversations that you didn't think you were ready for. So the energy can either be expansive or an eruption. It's going to depend, but it's quite strong right now. So heart and throat energetic eruptions and expansions. Look out for that. This next theme is interesting. So grief transforms into the new. One of the things that my guides brought through in a message a couple of years ago, they said grief is the great transformer. Now we as humans, we are supposed to grieve. You know, it, it's, it's completely valid and quite normal to grieve the loss of people that we love, to grieve the loss of friendships that we loved, to grieve the loss of places or workplaces, anything. We, we go through this letting go period and, and grief is a very human emotion. And it's a very necessary emotion. And my guides have said that grief is going to be, and they've said this for a few years, it's going to be a big theme this decade. And I think we're already seeing it, whether it's the grief of the changes that you're seeing going on, whether it's the grief of some of the world events that people are being impacted by, or your own. Maybe you're being impacted in your world right now, or people around you are. But it's interesting, they, they've been saying this a lot lately, to understand that grief actually is the creation of something new. It is not just the finishing point of something old. And they say that because our human minds and the way that we as a society tend to approach grief, it's old and it's heavy and it needs updating. So by all means, we should cry our eyes out and feel all our feelings. But not just in a way that keeps us staring at the floor and thinking that loss is not also a birth. And that's the message that they want to get across. Grief transforms into the new. And it's interesting, I was in England when the Queen passed in September. And I was very glad I was in the country um, when, when that happened. And obviously, you know, it brought up a lot of grief for many people. Um, of course, there are other people who have different ideas about the monarchy or the system. And, you know, I respect all of the differences of opinion. But the biggest thing for me that was very key about it, and I think this is something many of us agree on, is the end of an era. And it's the end of an era that we will probably never see again. But it also raises questions about what will the future of that system be? And that to me is just very symbolic of everything that we're going through right now. We are coming to the end of a lot of traditions and a lot of systems. And I notice when I speak to people about this, depending on who they are, there can be different viewpoints. But I think it's the Z's say it's vital for us to understand and look ahead and look for the new and look for the innovation. Because if we only focus on death, death is what we will become. And death is what will color our reality. But as they have said, if you're still alive today, which I clearly am right now, and you must be if you're watching this, you're alive. 
and there's a lot of new energy moving through the planet. So we have to be very mindful, especially at this time where there are many doom and gloom and deathly mm, prophecies, predictions, and data coming out. How do we want to approach this critical time? Do we want to look down at the floor and feel doomed? Or do we want to understand that those feelings of doom are just feelings of grief? Are we going to let them move through our body? And then are we going to be present for what's the next phase for our own personal life and for us as a collective? It's a really important distinction to make. And it's one that these guys were saying, give this message out because it's vital and it's where life force is right now. We'll come to another aspect of that in one of the last uh, themes. So here's a, an interesting thing from them that is the fight even real? Is it outside you or inside you, from the past or from the now? We've definitely seen through all the division energy in the last two and a half years that has been both sown into us as a world and uh, fed into us as a world and encouraged, but equally uh, reacted to by us as humans. Is the fight that you're in with yourself, with the outside world, with some person, is it even real? The Z's have reminded me time and time again, we're currently on book three for conversations with the Z's in terms of the recordings. They keep speaking about this war energetic on our planet that needs to heal and how that energy of fight and annihilation of other, it's not just showing up in an actual war, it's also showing up in our smallest thoughts of resentment or blame or judgment and that that is an energy template that needs to be healed now on the planet. So ask yourself if you find yourself in a fight right now or if you feel in a fight with elements of the outside world, is the fight even real? Is it outside you or is it coming from inside you? Is it from the past or is it from the now? And nine times out of ten you're going to find energies, emotions, thoughts, and memories inside you that are contributing to the way that you are reacting to this person in front of you. And so it's something for all of us to just kind of keep our eye on, you know, how clean is our perception and our perspective? Are we ready for a fight? Or are we willing to recognize, oh, I'm having some quite strong emotions. I know there are many ways of seeing this, and clearly these five people see this very differently to me. Do I want to fight and do I want to annihilate them and do I want to be right? Or am I noticing this sheet of emotion of fight energy moving through my body and can I just stand back? Can I just take a breath? Can I just delay sending that email for 24 hours even though I needed to write it? Because there's a lot of this moving through all of us right now and it can be very personal and very internal and equally you'll see people out there playing it out through desperation. So. Last two themes are, believe the aligned truth of those whose heart you can feel. This is the barometer of the future. So anyone where you can feel their heart is present, that's future proof. Anyone who is right now out of their heart in the way that they are speaking to others, in the way that they are controlling others, in the way that they are driving others, and in the way that they are discarding others, whether it's I'm not listening to your opinion or I'm overriding your own personal sovereignty, sovereignty and authority in this area. I'm going to be in the power position and I'm going to put my foot down about it. It's why we're seeing so many different things go on politically where we the people are no longer happy about certain impositions and restrictions that are being placed upon us because they aren't coming from heart consciousness, they're coming from control. So I'm not saying that that's everything in that arena, but be very mindful of, can you feel someone's heart when they're speaking? Can you feel that their heart is wide enough to hold many perspectives and many different needs? Or are they driving you or a group in one very specific direction? You don't need to look very far for what I'm talking about, but heart energy is going to be the barometer of the future. And lastly, and this is a nice one, but it also is an important one, even though it sounds kind of pithy, maybe. Seek and celebrate the innovation and the evolution. It needs to be seen by us to grow. 
So seek and celebrate the innovation that you see in the world and the evolution that you see in the world because that needs to be seen by us to grow. You may have noticed that where we are at currently journalistically is not high vibration. It's not in a place of uh, seeking the future, celebrating heart consciousness, it's still in an old place. And even though there are some wonderful new people and voices emerging, it's important for all of us to seek the things that light us up and that align with us. So if you're in a position where you're annoyed at the world, you aren't looking in the right places or you're overly looking at the wrong places. And you need to go out there and find some things that you care about, that you're passionate about, and that you can lean into. Because that energy generates. It's incredibly powerful. And so my guides were saying, it needs to be seen and celebrated by us. All of the new things, the good things, the evolutionary things, not only for our own well-being, but to support the growth of evolution and innovation. I've had several conversations with people over the last couple of months who've been perhaps in a darker place about the world. And I've been able to say, well, you know, I hear you and I don't disagree with you about all those things you just said, but what about this over here? And have you seen what this group is doing? And wow, what this group of young people is doing in the world is amazing. And they didn't even know it existed because we are not being focused there collectively. So we have to do that work. We have to be ambassadors of seeking and celebrating the innovation and the evolution of all the people around us that we see doing things for the world and for a better future. It's really important. So that is the end of the October 2022 energy update. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm thrilled to announce that we are bringing back initiation this year. It will start on October 26th. I did this for the first time at the end of last year and it was incredibly powerful and we had over 5,000 people join us from around the world. It's a channeled mystery school led by my guides and I bring weekly calibration videos so that after each 90 minute channeled transmission designed to connect us to what we need now, I help you work with it and integrate it with your humanity. So I'll play you a trailer for it in just a moment if you want to learn more about initiation, but we're delighted to be bringing that back. Conversation with Disease, the book I mentioned, is available now from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all good booksellers and online bookstores. Uh, there's an audible version, which is the original Conversations, where Diana is interviewing the Z's while I'm channeling. And then, of course, there is the Kindle and paperback version for those of you that like to read. Thank you so much for all your lovely messages about it. We're so happy that the series is now out in the world and beginning, and we have many more books to come over the coming years. So uh, thank you for your support. And lastly, The Portal is my monthly members community. If you like the work I do, and you would like even more tools, and also different pieces of content, inspiration, support, then The Portal is a one-stop place to both go deeper with my work, but also I bring a whole group of people with me. We have this wonderful thing called The Portal Presents, where every month I commission a different teacher, somebody who is inspiring, somebody who is doing something physical for you to support your life, and that library just keeps on building. So check out the portal uh, for uh, all of the great content that we put in there every month. And this month is the fourth part of my four-hour video channeled series, and this month it's called The Heart Reset of the 21st Century. It's a message from the Z's, and uh, you get that whole four-hour workshop when you join too. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you have a great month. We'll play you out with a little insight into initiation. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference to all of the free content that we put out for you. Thank you from me and my team. Lots of love. <music> I'm thrilled to announce that we are bringing initiation back for 2022. We first held it at the end of last year and it is a channeled mystery school. Even I don't fully know what my guides will bring through in the weekly transmissions, 
but their intent, and this is the message they've given me, is to synchronize us with the frequencies, the information, and the energies for this passage of time that we're moving through. I can attest that it was very powerful last year, and we had over 5,000 people join us from all around the world, so it was an incredible container. This year, we are starting initiation on October 26th, and for those of you who would like to join us live, I will be doing weekly live broadcasts where I channel my guides for 90 minutes each time. And in between those live broadcasts, I like to deliver what I call a calibration video, where I will guide you through the energetic and psychological process that we go through. If you want to watch it on replay, you will have lifetime access to all of the material. So whether you can join us live or not, you will get around 10 hours worth of material. This includes a welcome MP3 message from my guides all about what the initiation journey is designed to be and what you will be inviting into your life as you take this ride with us. We are also giving you our brand new album, Timelines, which we have paired with the course and you will be receiving that two months ahead of everyone else. Alongside that, we have self-care guides and a wonderful community forum where you can share with other members of the group what you're going through, how you're experiencing it, and there is so much medicine in that community. These are always very exciting and slightly unknown events for me because in turning over to my guides as much as I'm about to, I always know that we're going to go on a very shamanic journey but it always seems to intersect perfectly with what's going on in the world at that time and what those of us who show up for the journey are bringing in and calling in for our year to come. So if initiation feels like the right call for you at the right time, we would love to welcome you. Click the link below for more details.